Well, today I'm going to talk about Rayleigh scattering. We did part of Rayleigh scattering last time when we did Thompson scattering. So, as you know, there are three diagrams. There's, first of all, the Seagull diagram. Photon K comes in, K prime goes out. Atom comes in, state A goes out, state B. Then there are two others. In intermediate atomic state C, photon K comes in, photon K prime goes out. And then, whoops. K comes in, and K prime goes out. So, Thompson scattering involves this diagram. We computed that amplitude last time. We're going to use it this time. But, first, we have to compute these two amplitudes. And so, what we have is B, S of T, and 0A. Whoops, I left out the photons. A, K prime. Okay, so this is second order of perturbation theory, minus I over H bar squared, integral 0 to T, DT1, integral 0 to T1, DT2. And then, the matrix sum of the question is B, K prime. And now, the sum over IK from 1 to Z, then the free or the simple Hamiltonian, 80M plus H0F, T1 over H bar, minus Q over M, T dot A. And this is at, if this is T sub I, this is at XI, and it's still at time 0, E to the minus I, H0M plus H0F, T1 over H bar. And now, we're going to insert a complete set of states. And I think maybe I can save a line by saying explicitly what the states are. One is a complete set of atomic states, and the other is a complete set of atomic states together with the photons K and K prime. And then, the second matrix element, or the second term, namely E to the I, H0F plus H0M, T2 over H bar, minus Q over M. Now, the momentum of the J electron got into the electromagnetic field at the position of the J electron. E to the minus I, H0 matter plus H0 field, T, this is T2, right? T2 over H bar, and finally, the initial state, HK. Okay, so that's the matrix element. Remember, the basic potential here is minus Q over M, T dot A, well, sum, I should say, minus sum over PI, A to the sine 0. And then, plus Q squared over 2M, A 
of x i is 0 squared. So that's the basic, uh, well, I shouldn't put that minus sign there. Sum i is 1 to z minus q over m plus. So that's the potential. This term in first order gave rise to the Seagull diagram, which we did last time. And now this term in second order gives this expression. And um, so we're going to work that out today. Um, it, there's a certain amount of detail here and it came to 11 pages of notes. In fact, when I was writing it out, my right hand actually um, hurt quite a bit of the time. Um, so, I don't know, maybe LaTeX is the way to go. Um, it's just so time continues. In any event, we're going to treat these uh, free Hamiltonians, these quadratic Hamiltonians differently. The A0M is going to slam into the uh, I, into its eigenstates to the left and to the right, here to the left, there to the right. But the field Hamiltonian is going to um, instead transport the field from time zero to a time uh, t1 or t2 in, in, the, in the interaction picture. That is to say, a free time. Judge, I don't know, it's hard. To, this is just sort of a mathematical trick, so it's hard to see. If this were the only Hamiltonian, then this would be transporting the field in time. But so this is just A of X and T, and that is the sum H bar over 2 X1 0 B omega to the 1 half epsilon R of K A R of K E T I K dot X minus omega T plus epsilon star A dagger E to the minus I K X minus Omega T. Okay. So that's the structure that's going to occur here and there. And then the A0Ms are just going to produce E to the I, E B, T1 over H bar, and T C, and so forth. So when we, um, when we, let these Hamiltonians act, what we get is B, K prime, the S operator prime, T, A, K, minus I over H bar squared equals 0 to T, T, T1 equals 0 to T1, T, T2. T, T. Notice that the structure of the integrals and the ordering of the integrals implements the time ordering. So the, well, let's just, Keep in mind that the scattering operator S, the full scattering operator S of T0, is the time ordered product of E to the minus I over H bar integral from 0 to T V of T prime T T prime. So that's what we're computing. And this is the second order term in um, time order P K prime. Now we have E B I E B minus T C T one over H bar Q over M E dot A P I dot A of X I T one sum over C C C plus C K K prime C K K prime. times QPJ over M, A of XJ and T1, no, T2. 
got there. Um, A, K, then E, B, I, P, C, minus P, A, T, 2, over H prime. Okay, so that's the whole expression. And just one um, word of um, caution. The sum over C is not simply over the discrete atomic bound states, but it's also over the whole continuum. So in other words, uh, cases where this atom would be you know, blasted by um, some uh, cosmic ray and um, the electrons shot all over the in other words, a multiply ionized state of the atom. That's also included in the sum over C. That, that means that for atoms that, well, for hydrogen, you can actually do the calculation, but for other atoms, uh, well, you can't. But you can, you can learn something about it. Okay, now we're going to do. Uh, Two things. We, we, what we do is we first of all substitute for A here and there. We substitute the field in those two places. And that would give us these terms with the omega uh, that would, you see, it would be just the right omega because here, if the, if the intermediate state is C with no photons, then this field operator, the only part that survives is the annihilation operator for this particular photon, with the wave number and polarization of that photon. That would mean that you have, well, let's see, maybe I should add, um, all right, let me add a line here, so to speak. So this is IQ over H bar M squared h bar over 2 epsilon 0 v square root of omega omega prime integral 0 to t dt1 integral 0 to t1 dt2 and now what we get is e to the i still e b minus e c t1 over h bar and a sum over ij uh, from 1 to z, b k prime. And, well, let me just do it this way. pi dot epsilon a e to the i k dot x minus omega t plus, well, we might as well put a parenthesis there, plus epsilon star a dagger. And this is going to be a k, and this is going to be a k prime. So let me put a prime on that. P e minus I, K prime dot X minus omega prime T. Um, and then the sum over C, CC plus CK, K prime, CK, K prime. And then PJ dot epsilon a e to the i kx minus omega t plus epsilon prime star a dagger prime e to the minus i kx minus omega t and which t is this? This one is, is the first t so that's t1 and this is the second t so that's t2 Okay, and then finally, e to the i 
PC minus PA, T2 over H bar, AK. Okay, so that's the second step in this expansion. And thanks for raising the boards. So what we've got here now is we've got these intermediate states, and there's two possibilities. If you use this sum, then you don't want any photons in the intermediate state, and then one acts as this operator first, and then this operator second. If, on the other hand, you want this intermediate, you use this intermediate, and that first one gives you, of course, this diagram here, the middle diagram. On the other hand, if you use this intermediate state, then you use the creation operator here and the annihilation operator there, and then that gives you this intermediate state, the time over the back of the photons. So the next thing we're going to do is, since we're talking about light scattering off atoms, if the light is of optical frequencies, and the atom is a normal atom, so that it's something like a Bohr radius or a multiple of that, then K dot H is of the order of 1 over 1,000, and consequently we can make a dipole approximation, which means we simply ignore this term. Of course, if you're doing a really accurate calculation, and the term of the dipole approximation is zero because of symmetry, then you have to go to the next term, which is instead of, in other words, E to the I, K dot X, equals 1 plus I, K dot X, plus so forth. If this term is really zero, then you've got to compute that. Okay, but going to the dipole approximation, you see, just means you rub out the K dot X. In fact, this K dot X should have been X I, and this one should be X J. But since we're going to erase them, it doesn't make a great deal of difference. Okay, so the diagram then for this, I mean, this, by the way, is essentially a Feynman diagram for atomic light, light or atom scattering, and time, of course, is going this way. Okay, so what is this diagram? What does this diagram represent? It represents P K time, S of T zero, K K, but for process R1, namely this one, R for Rayleigh and the first one, the second one being the one where the photon lines cross. So this is then I Q over H bar M squared H bar over T epsilon zero B square root of omega omega time times integral zero to T one equals zero to T one T two. And now we make the dipole approximation, K dot X has disappeared, and these E to the plus or minus I omega T one or T two, we float, we pull these out and combine them either with the first phase factor that has a T one or the last phase factor that has a T two. And so now what we get is E to the I E B plus H bar omega prime minus E C T one over H bar times the sum over I and J from one to Z, Z being the number of protons in the nucleus, B K prime, P I dot epsilon R prime star at K prime, A sub R prime dagger of K prime. And now sum over C, 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 and then P J dot epsilon R of K, A R of K, A K, 
And finally, the last phase factor, EVI, EC minus EA, that's this term. But then from over here, the annihilation operator, we have E to the minus I omega T2. So that's the intro that we have to do, or at least say something about. And we have to now do the T integrals. Doing the T2 integral, of course, gives us, I'm just wondering how much of this I'm going to write again. So with an equal sign, we lose one I over H bar. So we have Q over M squared H bar over 2 epsilon 0 V root omega omega prime. We still have the T1 integration. And it's E to the I E plus H bar omega prime minus EC to 1 over H bar. And then we have time sum IJ equals 1 to Z. And well, before writing that down, so as I'm going to do the T integration, I'm also going to let these operators act. This creation operator, or let me do the simple one first. The annihilation operator on the state of 1 photon just takes us back to the state of no photons. And the adjoint of that is that the state of 1 photon, a bra of 1 photon on the creation operator for that photon just gives us a bra for no photons. So we just have B, PI dot epsilon prime star sum on C. And then PJ dot epsilon A. And now doing the T1 integration, we get EBI EC minus EA minus H bar omega T1 minus 1 over EC minus EA minus H bar omega. OK, so that's that expression. We've done one of the integrals. And now when we do the second integral, we actually have two of them to do. We have to do the product of this times this. And when you do that, you see that the EC terms cancel. And what you have left is just that an exponential I times the energy of the final state minus the energy, the total energy of the initial state times T1 over H bar. And you do that integral for the product of these two. But when you get this one times this one, you get something else. And so I suppose I might as well not skip that. I'll write it down. So this is equal to then Q over M squared. We're losing the I over H bar again. We have 2 epsilon 0 V square root of omega omega prime. And now we get two terms. The first integral here is this EB plus H bar omega prime minus EA minus H bar omega T over H bar minus 1. And then this whole thing is over EB plus H bar omega minus EA minus H bar omega prime minus omega times H bar omega. This is the resonant term. Resonant because the initial state is A and photon K. And the final state is B, atom B in state B plus photon in state K prime. Then total energy conservation is going to tell us that this thing is going to be 0. So this has a big contribution. Then there's another term. Multiplying that by that and doing the integral, we get minus EPI EB plus H bar omega prime minus EC T 
over H bar minus 1 divided by an energy denominator EB plus H bar omega prime minus EC. Now, all of this is multiplied by essentially the atomic matrix element, which is the sum I is equal to 1 to Z, B, PI dot epsilon prime star, well, sum also over C, so C, C, EJ dot epsilon A. And moreover, this thing gets the energy denominator that was sitting here, EC minus EA minus E bar omega. Okay, so that's the expression. Are there any questions? All right, now, here comes a mysterious point. The process we're looking at has A and has photon in state A and the, I'm sorry, the atom in state A, the photon in state K, the initial state, the final state is atom in state B, photon in state K prime, that's the final state. And we know from conservation of energy, which actually comes from this term, it turns into a delta function, you know, that this energy denominator is going to be essentially zero. And normally, for most intermediate states C, this energy denominator is not zero, and so we can simply ignore this term. So this term compared to this one is going to be zero. But there are possibly, in fact, there may actually be, for certain omega prime, there may be certain intermediate states C, such that this energy denominator is zero, and in which case this state, this combination of exponentials and one is important. And this is a different process, though. This is a process called resonance fluorescence. I never mention this spelling, so when I work at my desk, I always have instant spelling correction on. Anyway, in fact, it's broken in the latest Emacs on Fedora Linux. So if anybody read that Linux, anybody knows how to fix that one. They claim to fix it in Fedora 411. Anyhow, sorry for the distraction. So resonance fluorescence is a different process, and so we're going to ignore this term. And there's also a symbol of zero that can occur down there. All right, anyway, so we're going to drop the middle term, and we just have this term. And so let's see. Well, as usual, we – well, let me just say, in other words – all right, let me write the final form then. Ek prime, S of T of zero, Ak of zero, Ak prime is Q over M plus Ak over M squared over Ak plus Ak over M squared over 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 Ak over M squared over
is the energy denominator EC minus EA minus H bar omega. But then there's this other factor, times EVI delta E, E over H bar, divided by delta E, where delta E is this delta E. All right, so that's that, the answer to that diagram. Now we want to do this diagram. So now we use the intermediate states over here. We just go back to this expression. We use these intermediate states. We can make a dipole approximation rubbing out the K dot X, replacing it by one. And now in the first term, the annihilation operator doesn't work. So the creation operator for K prime works. And then in the second term, the creation operator doesn't work, but the annihilation operator for K works. And then what you've got in this part of the formula is C, P, and P dot epsilon, PJ dot epsilon prime star acting on A. And then over here, you have C, K, K prime, and then the atomic structure, and then, or I should say, C, K, no, C, K prime on the right, P dot epsilon, and then B, K prime on the left. Okay, so in other words, for this diagram, what we get then is D, K prime, S of T and zero, A, K, and this is then rarely two, is equal to I, Q over H bar M squared H bar over two epsilon zero B root omega omega prime integral zero to T, T, T one, zero to T one, T, T two. And then P to the I, and if we remember what we did there, then we have E, B minus E, C minus H bar omega T one over H bar. And so to get that straight, why did that happen? Well, as I said, you've got the annihilation operator for photon K here, so that's E to the minus I omega T one here. And so we get minus H bar omega T one, and the H bar is in above and below. And then the sum over I, J, and C up to Z, B, K prime, P, I dot epsilon A sub R of K, C, K, K prime. Well, I've got, I left all the photons in here. So C, K, K prime, P, J dot epsilon prime star, A, R prime, A, R prime dagger of K prime, A, K. Okay, so in other words, let's see, I might have said it slightly wrong, I'm not sure. But anyway, what happens here is we have a creation operator here, takes the state K into the state K, K prime, so you get unity for the matrix element here, apart from the atomic part. And then over here, you have the K, K prime, so you have an A taking out the K, and you have a K prime, K prime, which again gives you unity. And now, the phase factors, E to the I, E, C minus E, A, plus H bar omega prime, T2 over H bar, and that plus I came from this term here, which 
had an e to the minus i k dot xj minus uh, omega prime t2. All right, so now we have to do the t integrals. And these t integrals are just this, uh, are basically the same as the other t integrals, so I'll skip the exact details. Does that make sense? All right. So let me just, we also have the same deal that we're going to ignore a term that's non-resonant, except in the case of resonance fluorescence. And what we get is pk prime s of t in zero ak r2 equals q over m squared h bar over q epsilon zero b squared of omega omega prime e to the i same delta e p over h bar minus one divided by delta e and then time sum over c and i j from one to z b p i dot x one c c p j dot x one prime star a over e c minus e a plus h bar omega prime. And the delta E is the same delta E, it's just the energy is the total, total energy of the final state minus total energy of the initial state. So now what we have to do is we have to look back in our notes and see what the amplitude, the actual amplitude, not the cross section, the amplitude was for the CO diagram. And then add up to uh, Let's see, where was the last expression? This amplitude, and then add it to that amplitude. So we get all three. And so when we do that, we get P k prime S of T in zero, A k equals Q over M squared H bar of two epsilon zero B root omega omega prime. E to the I delta E T over h bar minus 1 over delta E, and then times a big expression, as you might imagine. First of all, there's a relative minus sign in um, the, uh, in between the two terms. There's a minus m z delta a b epsilon r of k dot epsilon r prime of k prime star. So that's the Seagull term. And you know why I did that one first. It's so much simpler. Um, and then, maybe I'll write it this way, plus a sum ij equals 1 to z and the sum over intermediate atomic state c, and we get v pi dot epsilon prime star c c j dot epsilon a over epsilon c minus epsilon a minus h bar omega. That's the middle term, and then. B e, pi e dot epsilon cc pj e dot epsilon prime star a over pc e minus ea plus h bar omega prime. And if you want to put parentheses here. And then you need a big square closing parenthesis. So that's the whole expression. All of this is online. Okay. 
Now, so this is the amplitude. So that's the amplitude. You then need to take the absolute value squared of this to get the probability. You let t go to infinity and you use the delta function relation. And I realize now that I stupidly use, I mean, I use the correct formula, but I use an unfamiliar delta function of identity. The one that is going to be canonical is t goes to infinity, t i, I mean, it is different by a factor of four, but this one, this is the one that you should be using. Which is to say, limit t goes to infinity for, see, I divide it out for four, or time squared delta e t over two h bar divided by delta e squared equals two pi t over h bar delta over delta e. So this is the, this is the one that you, that I should have been using. I multiplied it, I factored out the four from this expression, and so everything looked, looked odd. Pi over, pi t over two h bar. Whereas this, this is the formula that fits more neatly in the Fermi's golden rule. Okay, so when we take the absolute value squared of this to get the probability, we then, we then differentiate with respect to time. After we have used this double confirmation, differentiate with respect to time, we get that the rate is two pi over h bar times the absolute value squared of the amplitude, which is say all of this except for this space factor, and then times an energy conserving double function. So what we're gonna get here then is q squared h bar over, and now what I've done for some reason is I factored, well I factored out this term. Over that here. And when it comes out here, it comes out here in the numerator, it cancels one of these things. So we get an m to epsilon zero v root omega omega prime, all of this squared times an absolute value of minus z delta a v epsilon dot epsilon prime star, plus you can do the calculation with real polarization vectors, then you don't have to fool with any of these stars. One over m, sum over i j from one to g in an intermediate state c, and v pi dot epsilon prime star c is c, and j dot epsilon e c minus e a minus h bar omega, plus v pi dot epsilon c c, and j dot epsilon prime star a, divided by e c minus e a plus h bar omega prime. Absolute value squared times delta of delta e. So this is an instance of Fermi's golden rule. Two pi over h bar delta function, energy conserving delta function, and then absolute value squared is the answer to where the amplitude goes all the way over to here. All right, so that's the expression. Let me get a sip of tea. By the way, I have my usual supply of chocolate, so. Maybe you have questions. Feel free to ask. Okay, the full rate is integrating this over the final states, or summing over the final states, so maybe just to make things simple, 
I'll say some of you is the integral of this. And what is it? Well, you integrate with v over 2 pi q cqk. But now, in order to in order to make the delta function go more easily, since this is a delta function of h bar omega, one of what we do is we're going to write this eqk like this. We're going to say eqk is going to be d omega, which is going to give us d sigma d omega. So the d omega is going to be the k squared and the cos of dk. But we're going to rewrite this as d omega k squared d h bar omega. And we have to divide by omega and the c because omega is kc. So to avoid writing this whole thing again then, I'm going to replace this eqk by this. So I'm going to have a k squared over h bar c d h bar omega d omega solid angle. All right. And now, of course, the d h bar omega and the delta function just force omega to be exactly the omega that makes delta E zero. Namely, h bar omega is equal to E d plus h bar omega prime. Oh, gee, I made a mistake. I should be integrating over. How do I get the right answer if I screw this up? Well, what happens here is we go to the, I went to the case of elastic scattering, and which is what Rayleigh scattering is. And in elastic scattering, k equals k prime. So let me fix this on the fly. This is the sum over final states. So this is k prime d k prime k prime omega prime k prime omega prime and d omega prime. Okay. Fourth is the liquid prime. All right. So that's our expression. And this just arranges things such that h bar omega prime is E a plus h bar omega minus E c. So the delta function ensures that h bar omega prime is that. So then what we have here is d sigma d omega equals, now the integral is gone. The delta function is gone. And I've changed omega prime to omega. And this is gone. So that's our formula for d sigma d omega. I'm wondering. All right. Let me. We've got a lot of numerical stuff out in front. First of all, this minus sign just has to be negative with respect to this plus sign. So just for cosmetic reasons, we're going to put a minus sign there and a plus sign here. It doesn't matter inside the epsilon. Then we have to combine all of these constants together with all of these constants. And I'm going to do this in one fell swoop. And what we get is r0 squared omega prime over omega z delta ab epsilon dot epsilon prime star 
minus 1 over M sum over IJ from 1 to Z intermediate states, and then this whole structure that we've seen so many times, P PI dot epsilon prime star C C PJ dot epsilon A EC minus PA minus H bar omega plus P PI dot epsilon C C PJ dot epsilon prime star A EC plus H bar omega prime minus PA after value squared. Okay. So that's our expression, where R0 is alpha H bar over MC, which is the classical radius of the electron, which is of the order of 3 fermions, 22 times 10 to the minus 13 centimeters. Okay. So that's the, um, that's the actual expression, but now what we're going to do and is fool with this so as to get something that is um, a little bit simpler. And first of all, we're going to go to the case where A equals B, so this term is just 1, and B's become A's. We're talking about elastic scattering, then a photon comes in, atoms in state A, photon goes out, atoms still in state A. The energy then, energy conservation then tells you that omega prime is the same as omega, but uh, the direction of the photon can be different. So the, so the word scatter is particularly appropriate because the photon comes in one direction and then goes out in another direction and has the same energy. So the photons are scattered. Um, okay. Now, what's, what we're going to do now is something that's totally counterintuitive. We're going to write this nice term, epsilon dot epsilon prime star, in a completely horrible, we're going to create a horrible expression for, for this, one that is fully as complicated as this, and then various terms cancel and we can make various approximations. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the fact that HI commutative with H0 matter is equal to IH bar PI over M. And this M is always the reduced mass by the way. And so we're going to write um, A XI. So this is the i electron, it's a vector here. C as a xi commutative Hamiltonian matter Hamiltonian C over EC minus EA and um, that then is going to give us I H bar over M A momentum of the I electron C over this energy denominator E C minus A. Okay, well, when we do that, this um, C dot epsilon epsilon prime. Z times epsilon dot epsilon times star becomes a sum over I, J, and C, 1 over M, A, P, I, dot epsilon times star C, C, P, J, dot epsilon A, over E, C minus A, plus A P J dot epsilon C C 
Over ECA, ECA 
plus H bar omega times the base factor. So that's the actual cross-section. We haven't yet made any actual approximations. This is the elastic scattering of light by an atom in it. So you see, in general, it goes as omega squared. But we're now going to go to the limit of omega small, of H bar omega small compared to ECA. And the reason why this is legitimate is that ECA for normal colorless gases is in the ultraviolet, whereas for visible light, H bar omega is in the visible. So H bar omega is small compared to ECA. It's not one over a thousand, though, but it's small. It's smaller. So we're going to say for omega less than ECA, we can write one over ECA minus or plus H bar omega is equal to one over ECA times one over one minus or plus H bar omega over ECA. And that is equal to one over ECA. That's approximately equal to one plus or minus H bar omega over ECA. Now, the reason why this is a useful approximation is the minus sign that sits here. Because the dominant term, in other words, if we let H bar omega actually go to zero, we just have ECA squared here, ECA squared here. And then these two terms would cancel exactly. And then I'm wondering, what did I? I've got, maybe they only cancel exactly for real polarization vectors. Let's see. I know that, in fact, in Boos's, all right. So I'm not sure what happened to the Oh, wait a minute. It's easier than that. It's easier than that. Strike what I just said. Because you can't just strike what's in the front of the computer. But we're not going to cancel these terms directly. What we're going to do, we are going to cancel them directly, but we're not going to cancel them just from that. We're going to be a little bit more subtle about it. So let's notice that these terms, why do these two terms cancel? Well, sum over IJ from 1 to Z in intermediate states, 1 over ECA squared here. So the dominant term is A PI dot epsilon prime star C. In fact, let's just replace, let's suppress the sum over, the sum over C just gives us the identity operator here. So this is A PI dot epsilon prime star J dot epsilon, and then an A, but let's subtract this term, minus PI dot epsilon J dot epsilon prime star. Well, I thought I was so clever. This is not the right way to do it. Let's leave the sum over C. I departed from my notes. I thought I had a shorter way of doing it. Let's just follow the notes. Okay, so that's what we've got. Now, we do the same trick that we did over here, namely P over epsilon CA is M over IH bar times the matrix element of X with C. And when we do that, we get the sum over IJ and C. We then get an M squared, A XI dot epsilon prime star 
C, C, X, J dot X, Y, A, minus A, X, I dot X, Y, C, C, X, J dot X, Y, prime star, A. And now, replacing the sum over C by the identity operator, we get the sum over I, J, M squared, A, the commutator of X, I dot X, Y, prime star, with X, J dot X, Y, A. And these things commute, so we get zero. But in order to do that, we again have to remember that over here, I and J are dummy indices, so we can interchange I and J. So we make this a J, and this one an I. And there's an overall minus sign. No, there isn't any overall minus sign. Okay, so this is the... Okay, so in other words, in the limit, h bar omega goes to zero, this whole structure here is zero. And that's the reason why we did the very kind of counterintuitive thing of replacing epsilon dot epsilon prime star with this huge sum over intermediate states of matrix, atomic matrix elements divided by energy denominators. Okay, so what... So what we do then is we, instead of having these formulas here, we take this and write it like that, and then we write it like this, and so we get a, uh, the one over EA, ECA squared term cancels, and then there are the other terms which pull out. In other words, we have an H bar omega over ECA that's going to occur here and there with a different sign. And that means we have an, H, an overall H bar omega we can pull out as so we get H bar omega to the fourth. So the expression is, if I skip just a tiny bit of the arithmetic, it's EC, E sigma D omega is then equal to R0M over H bar squared, squared, H bar omega to the four times the sum over IJ from one to Z, sum over C, one over ECA, and then A, XI dot epsilon prime star, C, C, XJ dot epsilon, whoops, Oh, that means a statement of another standard. Plus A XI dot epsilon C C XJ dot epsilon prime star A absolutely square. Okay, so that's the final expression in this limit of um, small uh, omega. So for omega, H bar omega much less than C minus A. So what you notice here is this goes as the fourth power of the energy. That means that blue light, for example, scatters 16 times more than uh, red light because the wavelength of the energy is about twice as big. So you have a factor of two to the fourth. So E sigma D omega blue is of the order of 16 times D sigma D omega red. And so that means then you're sitting on a planet here and um, there's the sun out here, not drawn to scale, radiating out of all these photons. A blue photon comes along, bang, gets scattered here from the sky, from the upper atmosphere, and comes down. And so the sky overhead 
at sunset is blue. In fact, it's almost always blue or like blue or black overhead. The red photons from here, so this is the blue photon. The red photon just goes right through. And then here, notice this is a huge amount of atmosphere. Here. I should have brought the color chalk down. Huge amount, this would have been one good use of color chalk. Um, so a lot of atmosphere down here. The blue photons come in, whoops, scatter and go down to the ground or out into outer space. But the red ones come by like that, and so when you look at the sun and the sky around the sun, it's red. So the sunset or the dawn is red. The sky overhead is um, always more or less blue. Unless it's cloudy, and then you have a lot of um, water droplets, and they can um, they can just scatter light at all frequencies, and so the water droplets just scatter everything down, and so it's white on a cloudy day. Okay, so that's that's basically that. I think that can then can finish our our um, coverage of um, the interaction of light with atoms. And um, so I'm planning. You guys fill me in. I haven't checked the calendar. It, are there normal classes next week, or is it exams next week? And it's exams. Okay. So what I'm going to do next week, since we didn't have, um, remember I missed two days when I went away to a conference? So I'm going to get two make-up make lessons next week and do them on QED. Okay. Now the question is, the simplest thing to do is to just have the, the class lectures at exactly the same time and exactly the same day, so on like Monday at 3.30, Wednesday at 3.30. But if that... I mean, there are only four of you here, so if that conflicts with some problem, or that causes problems you have, we can we can change the day of the week, or we can move them later in the day. Oops. So, does anybody have an exam that uh, an exam next week that would make things awkward? So we just do it then the same time of day, same day of the week? All right, we will. Okay. All right. That, oh, that's as long as the classroom's available. Um, what I will do, what I will try to do, and just in case I forget, maybe one of you could also do, is check to make sure that we can have the classroom at the same time. It may be that we can only have the classroom at a different time or a different day. So um, let's, let's, uh, let's check that out. Okay, so I'll try to give you the, uh, the things that are simple and important about 3D. Well, can't do everything, can't do the whole subject, but we can um, talk about some of that. All right, so let's cancel.